go ahead and tell me about yourself. All right, well, so I'm Patrick Nowak. Um, I've been a blacksmith. I picked up blacksmithing when I was in college, so for about 25 years I've been forging. I got interested in, in forging uh, because I was interested in knife making. I started making knives when I was in junior high school, but using stock removal methods. <clears throat> And that actually exposed me to different steel alloys and how they're heat treated to get different properties, in particular for blades. And that really kind of started my interest in the world of metals and steels in particular. And I ended up um, going to college to become a metallurgical engineer. And so that's what I do as a profession. And I've been very fortunate to land a job uh, at a big forging company called Scott Forge. Uh, uh, the facility I work at most of the time is in southern Wisconsin. The headquarters is in northern Illinois. So I've been with Scott Forge for about 19 and a half years. Um, and so my, my professional work and my hobby work uh, really blend together very well. And I feel, feel very fortunate to have that kind of a situation. Um, so I've, I've found that I really enjoy, I really enjoy forging in general. Uh, most of my own forge work centers around forging uh, mokume. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with that, it's like a Damascus, but done with copper-based materials. Or some people use precious metals, but um, the folks I know don't work in the precious metal stuff. That's super expensive, but you see some jewelers that do that. Uh, so I forge a lot of that material. Um, and then I forge a lot of, of tools, um, fabricate things, just whatever, uh, whatever strikes my fancy. And... And I end up doing a lot of things to help other people get started. I've had a ton of help from others as I've gone through, you know, getting started and not having much money to start when you're a college student, you don't have any job or any income and you're trying to scrape things together to now, you know, after 25 years, having a chance to put a lot, um, invest a lot in my hobby, uh, have a lot of uh, extra resources. So I try to share that with uh, people who are trying to get started, especially when we see young people that want to get into the craft. Um, so because of... Uh, the connections I have through work, being able to get a hold of big chunks of scrap metal at pretty inexpensive prices, I can turn around and pass those on to people who are looking for a sort of homemade anvil, makeshift anvils, uh, things like that, other, other sources of raw material. Favorite thing to make? Boy. Um, well, I think probably my favorite thing is whatever it is I'm working on at the time. Um, the stuff that, uh, that I make that funds the workshop is, is the mokume. Uh, that's a pretty technically demanding forging to do even when you're not forging a complex shape because it's a laminated material. Um, and in this case, being copper alloys, you have a lower melting temperature than with steel and the melting temperature of the different components is not the same. So you have to uh, be very careful with your forging temperatures uh, so you don't melt your, your work pieces, but then also you have to be very careful with the technique that you use so that you get, um, so that you don't have billets split apart, um, so that you don't have patterns become distorted. Um, um, and and you're, because of the cost of that material, you're trying to forge it in a way to preserve as much usable material as you possibly can. Um, a lot of what I do is um, material that's forged to very precise dimensions. So I have dedicated tooling to allow me to do that. Uh, and we do that because you're trying to minimize the amount you have to machine off later. Again, trying to, to maximize your yield. So forging Mokume has some uh, technically challenging aspects that I enjoy. Um, if you're doing a big run, then you're also kind of running production, you know, and so running production where you're standing in front of one of these hammers for eight or 10 hours a day, is running production just like you would if you were being in somebody else's workshop at a factory or whatever. Um, it's not uh, it's not horrible work, right? Um, but it's it's repetitive. But it's repetitive, and at the same time, every single piece you put on the dies, you have to pay attention. You have to be engaged with what you're doing, or you're not going to get it right. You know, some of the things that I do are are uh, patterns that are twisted, uh, but then forged into flat stock, and so there's challenges in determining what dimension you're going to use for your twist size so that you get your desired flat size. And when you're, when you're doing that kind of work, and this would be true whether you're doing Mokume or Damascus or, or some other thing, um, you, you have to account for uh, the, the increase in length of whatever it is you're forging 
while you're trying to get some width dimension. So a common thing for me to do is to um, create a twist pattern by forging the starting material into an octagon, twisting the octagon and then flattening it. Um, but I have to figure out what size octagon to make so that I get the desired width. Um, and if I use an octagon that has a cross section that's exactly the same as the desired finished cross section, I'll never get the width right. It'll always be undersized because a certain amount of that volume always is, is, is lost to an ex the lengthening of the part. So you have to add in some. Um, and so, you know, so there's that. And then even when you do that, you still have to think about how are you going to do the forging? How are you going to use a wide die bite or a narrow die bite? Are you going to use an auxiliary tool like a fuller to force that metal to spread to the side a little bit more rapidly than you can with just the flat dies on the hammer? So even in repetitive work, there's still a challenge uh, that keeps you engaged.